Okay. So this is an important loophole that a lot of people get into, an important trap that a lot of people fall into when they're learning about uh, reactive programming. Hopefully I've given you enough of the foundation to realize that this is a trap and then you're not going to fall into it, but I'm still going to call it out anyway. Can you tell me what's wrong with this code? I'm uh, getting a flux, mapping it to get a new value, and then I'm subscribing it. What's wrong with this code? Let's see if you folks are awake. Especially the person who said it's 1 a.m. Let's see if you're, you're still awake. What's wrong with this code? Exactly. The, the flux is getting ready to return is ignored. No, it's not ignored. So here the map is taking the new value and then mapping it to get new value of this thing. So the get new value return is being considered in this map. Okay. The problem, and I don't know if this is what you were mentioning there, is that the return of this map is ignored. Okay. So this is a flux. Okay. Get flux is going to give you a flux. It's one stream. Now you're mapping on that flux and changing the value from value to a new value. What is this going to do? It is going to give you a new flux. So the intent I'm guessing is to subscribe to that new flux, right? I want to print the correspondingly replaced new value. But when I do this, the code as is written over here is going to print the values from this flux and not with this one. Okay? Because this one is a new flux. What what we did earlier was we did get flux dot map dot subscribe, which means we are doing a subscribe on the return of the map. Okay, we're not doing that here. What we're doing is we're doing a subscribe on the return of this get flux. Okay? So you gotta be very careful when you do these things. You have to remember that anytime you do an operator, you either chain it or you apply it to the right flux. Okay? Otherwise, you're going to end up with problems like this. And the other one I already called out, if you're not doing a subscribe, that basically means that the, the conveyor belt hasn't been turned on, right? You've put everything in place. You've put all the workers on the assembly line, but you haven't turned on the conveyor belt. So always make sure you subscribe. That's another common pitfall that people fall into. It's like, why, why is my flux not emitting anything? I've put a log there. I've put all these operators. Well, your conveyor belt doesn't turn on. You got to subscribe to start the process. Can we chain the subscribe method? No, you cannot. Unlike these operators, the subscribe method does not return a flux. Okay, the subscribe method returns a disposable. Okay, a disposable allows you to dispose and say, well, I don't want this anymore. Again, it's a switch to turn off the conveyor belt and say, no more new items. But it does not, does not return a flux. Only these operators return a flux. Okay? Your subscribe is basically you saying what to do when the element arrives. Okay, in the case of a mono, it's easier to, to reason with. In the mono, what to do when the mono emits the event. When you do a subscribe, you're basically hooking onto the mono, right? And saying, do this thing. And what you're going to get back is a disposable. You're not going to get another mono. Okay, something to remember. So you cannot chain subscribe methods. You can add more subscribe methods to the same mono, which we already did earlier, right? You could put more subscribe methods to the same flux and the same mono. So it's going to, have to fire all of them, right? It's a bubble subscribe model. But once you do a subscribe, what you're going to get as a result is not a mono or a flux that you can subscribe to again, okay? What you get back as a result is a way for you to cancel that subscription, right? You have an option to turn off the power button in your conveyor belt. I think we have a timeout with subscribe method. Can you tell a use case for this timeout? Well, a timeout is can be used in a bunch of different ways. Or you have a way for you to do a fallback when something is taking a long time, right? So a common way for making a REST API calls in, in Spring Boot is using web client. A web client is a reactive model, right? So you can say, I'm going to make a REST API call and it's going to give me a mono but I'm going to time out after some time. If, if I don't get a response within a certain period of time, I'm going to do a fallback. Okay, so that's a use case for a, for a timeout, right? Do a subscribe only within this time. If it doesn't happen, just do this anyway. Or that right, you know, implement code to do an alternative thing if it has timed out or something like that. So yeah, those would be some use cases. 
Does timeout mean a rollback? What do you mean a rollback? There's no rollback here. An event gets emitted, is emitted. Okay, rollbacks happen only in transactions. Here, there's no concept. Either an event happened or it didn't happen, right? Either it completed or it ever done. There's no concept of, a, un, of an event unhappening, right? It's like once, it, once it's gone, it's gone. Okay, 